Living longer, living healthier, living better than ever before. Welcome to Mountain Pacific's Healthy Living for Life, a weekly series that gives you the information, education, and expert insight you need to become an active participant in today's ever-changing healthcare climate. Here now is today's program host. Pharmacists do more than just fill prescriptions. They can dispense advice on the medications prescribed too. Many pharmacies are open late and on weekends and you don't need an appointment. Today we will talk with two pharmacists about services your pharmacist can provide you. I'm your host Beth Brown. Welcome to Healthy Living for Life, a show dedicated to helping you do just that. We'll be right back after these messages. Stay with us. Welcome back. My first guest is Monique Doppler, a pharmacist with Mountain Pacific Quality Health, who has many years of experience as a retail pharmacist. Thanks so much for being here today, Monique. Thanks for having me. Can we start out this morning talking about immunizations? What can pharmacists do to help us get the immunizations we need? Yes, so the majority of people know that immunizations are um, available at the pharmacy. Um, what they don't know, though, is that pharmacists are trained to educate on all immunizations and vaccines. Um, so what that means is if you have any questions regarding um, immunizations, you can ask your pharmacist. They're a great resource. Um, one thing you do want to keep in mind, though, is when you're getting an immunization at the pharmacy level, there are age restrictions as well as limitations to what immunizations the pharmacist can provide. So you do want to check with your pharmacy to see what they have available. Okay. Okay, great. And there are many over-the-counter medications that we can get either for some common conditions or minor injuries we might have. Can we talk to our pharmacist about our over-the-counter medications? Absolutely. So pharmacists are very accessible and available without an appointment. So if you do have minor conditions or minor ailments, um, stop at your pharmacy and ask your pharmacist. They'll be able to tell you if you need to see a doctor or if they do give you advice about over-the-counter products. They'll tell you when to see your doctor if your, your symptoms persist. Um, some common conditions that you may want to talk to your pharmacist about are common cold. You know, if you have runny nose, congestion, fever, um, ask your pharmacist what would be a good over-the-counter to use. Um, seasonal allergies are huge right now, so there are lots of over-the-counter preparations as far as tablets, um, allergy medications, and nasal sprays. Um, you can talk to your pharmacist about acne, constipation, rashes, insect bites, um, minor injuries, minor pain. So lots of things that you can talk to your pharmacist. Okay, great, that's good to know. And then I've also heard that pharmacists can help you quit smoking. How can I talk to my pharmacist about that? Yes, and not a lot of people think of their pharmacist as a resource for smoking cessation, but um, they can counsel you on prescription medications that are used for smoking cessation, as well as the over-the-counter nicotine products. They're also a good resource to help you establish a quit date and then set up regular check-ins to see how you're doing, keep you motivated. And then if you have um, quit smoking, they can assess any um, complications or challenges you may encounter, you know, if you're having withdrawal or cravings. Okay, and so another area that people might need some help on and that is often confusing or difficult to navigate is Medicare Part D. Can a person who is struggling with what they understand about their copay and what's covered talk to their pharmacist about Medicare Part D? Yes, that's a great question. So a lot of pharmacies do offer that service during open enrollment. Um, you can talk to your pharmacist and they can access the Medicare.gov website and enter in all your prescriptions that you're taking and it'll generate a list of um, specific plans you know that are tailored to the medications you're taking so you can use that to compare side by side and it'll give you an estimate of your premiums out of pocket expenses cost of medications or any coverage gap. So you'd want to check with your pharmacy to see if they offer that service. And that's for people that are Medicare D eligible or if you're on Medicare D and just looking to switch your plan. Okay, great. And then what about just any of my prescription medicines? Um, what if I have a question about any of those? Yes, uh, pharmacists are the medication experts. So if you have any questions regarding your prescription, stop and ask your pharmacist. Um, they can help you with medication adherence and compliance, meaning um, you're taking your medication exactly how it's prescribed when you're supposed to be taking it. They can help you with the proper time of day to take your medication, um, dosing questions, what to do if you miss a dose. Um, they're also good reference as far as um, if you're having any side effects or any potential interactions there may be with other drugs. 
Um, so yeah, any questions you have. Um, I always encourage patients when they're prescribed a new medication, stop and talk to your pharmacist. And I know a lot of times when they're at the pharmacy, it may be busy or you may not have your questions on hand or you know in the back of your mind. But when you get home and if you think of a question, pick up the phone and call your pharmacist. That's what we're here for. Awesome. And you mentioned side effects or interactions. And so we know we need to be careful about the possibility that our medications might interact with one another. What about foods or vitamins and supplements? Do we need to be aware of any interactions that can happen there? Yeah, that's a great question. There is the potential for um, interactions with supplements and food. Some really common food interactions that you may not think of are dairy products, um, alcohol, green leafy vegetables, grapefruit juice, and it can um, cause interactions on each end of the spectrum. It can cause the medication to have too high of drug the drug level to be too high in your bloodstream, which can cause the medication to be more potent and cause side effects, or it can be on the other end of the spectrum where the levels of the medication in your bloodstream aren't high enough and you get a subtherapeutic response. So you definitely, when you start a new medication, want to ask your pharmacist if there are any potential food or um, supplement interactions. Okay, great. And then what about sunshine? People are getting outside more, the weather's getting nicer. Can medications make us more sensitive to the sunlight? Yes, that's a great question. They can. Um, there are some medications that are definitely known for causing sun sensitivity. Um, and typically when you get prescribed a medication, your pharmacist will make you aware of that. Um, some common medications that can cause photosensitivity are topical acne products, um, some blood pressure medications, or even some antibiotics. So what you want to do is, um, if you're ever prescribed a medication, you want to make sure that you ask your pharmacist that question. Um, and the best way to manage photosensitivity is by prevention. So that means wearing protective clothing, wearing a hat, staying in the shade, or making sure you're covered in sunscreen. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Mia yeah. Monique. That was a lot of great information. We'll be right back after the break. Please stay with us. Welcome back. Lisa Sather joins us now. Lisa is the Director of Clinical Pharmacy Programs for Mountain Pacific Quality Health, and will be sharing some useful tips for being an engaged and empowered patient when it comes to your health and your medications. Lisa, you're no stranger to this show, but thanks for being here with me today. Thanks, Beth. <laughs> Can we start out by talking a little bit about uh, most adults at this point, they have had their doctor prescribe some sort of medication for them. They rush to the pharmacy to get it filled. They're either in a hurry, they're not feeling well, and they don't take the time to talk to the pharmacist, or maybe they don't even know that's an option. Can you talk about why it is important to take the time to talk to your pharmacist about your medications? Absolutely. Now remember, as Monique stated earlier, your pharmacist is in fact the medication expert. So if you leave the pharmacy without talking to your ph pharmacist, you're missing an important part of your healthcare team. Um, one of the most important functions they do is to make sure you understand your medication therapy appropriately. And if you leave the pharmacy with just your prescription and some written information, you really have not uh, received the full effect of what they can offer to you. So that is, is really important that even if your pharmacist or the technician checking you out doesn't ask you if you have any questions, you ask to talk to your pharmacist. You say yes each and every time you have a new prescription. And I want to just go over some of the questions you should be asking your pharmacist each and every time you get a new prescription um, if the pharmacist does not ask you. First one is what is the name of the medicine and what is it used for? Beth, if you get a prescription at the pharmacy, you should be able to tell any particular person who asks your doctor, I am on this medicine named lisinopril, it is for my blood pressure, instead of just it's my purple pill and I'm not really sure what it does. Um, it's really important to discuss when and how you take your medicine. Some medicines are taken once a day, some are taken multiple times a day. So you need to talk to your pharmacist if it is multiple times a day, does that mean I take it with breakfast, lunch and dinner? Or is it really important to Space it out at equal eight hour increments. Most of the time that's not an issue, but that's, that's an important piece not to miss. Also, some things are better taken after meals instead of with food. So it is important to know that each and every medicine is different. You want to make sure you ask that. How long should you take it? That's another important question to ask. Antibiotics is a great a great example of this because um, oftentimes we get an antibiotic for a particular condition. We might start feeling better in a few days. Do I need to take my antibiotic for the full 10 days of therapy? 
Yes, you do. You should be asking your pharmacist this and they will be counseling you on that. It's an important part of finishing the medication as prescribed. Some medicines are only taken as needed, so they don't have to be taken, even though you may have a 30-day course of therapy. They don't have to be taken for 30 days. Um, another quick question to ask is, will the medicine interact with any of my existing medications? I know Monique discussed this earlier, but that's really, really important, and that also includes non-prescription medications, and we may, t we may be able to talk about that a little bit later, but that is a really important thing to ask your pharmacist. Also, main side effects. What are the main side effects of the medicine I'm going to be taking? Um, there are very common side effects and there are very uncommon side effects. So you want to know, is nausea, this is, is nausea going to be common? Dizziness, drowsiness, those are kinds of things that your pharmacist typically will, will be talking to you about. Um, and just know that there also may be some labels on the bottle that will let you know that as well. And what if you forget to take a dose? It's really important to know in advance, not to know, to be wondering at the time you miss a dose. Also, um, what do you need to do with your medicines after you have been done using them or they're expired? We're gonna talk a little bit more about that more in depth later. But one final closing comment on this top topic is write down what your pharmacist is telling you. And then again, as Monique mentioned earlier, if you have any questions and you get home later, give them a call, that's what they're there for. Really great, and you talked about that the pharmacy is, or the pharmacist is part of your healthcare team. Should you try to stick with one pharmacy? Yes, absolutely, that is extremely vital, and let me tell you about that. You know, sometimes it's not possible. You may have an emergent situation where you fill your prescription at the hospital pharmacy in the middle of the night or something like that. But because you also may be seeing more than one doctor, it is really important to fill all of your medicines at one pharmacy, and for that reason, your pharmacist can be on top of things and know potentially if you have something that might be uh, an allergic reaction you've had in the past, they'll be able to counsel you on that as well. Any new medication that comes in as a prescription, they'll be able to review that with your existing medications and make sure that you're not going to have a, a, a serious drug interaction. They'll be able to discuss that with your doctor in advance before you get your prescription and go out the door. A common thing that might happen is folks are on a chronic pain medication, filling it at one pharmacy. They go in for another urgent situation, they're having problems sleeping, they fill that medicine at a different pharmacy. Those two medicines combined, if you're not getting those at the same place, nobody's gonna know that there's an interaction going on and you could, definitely could have a severe side effect from combining those two medicines. Okay, and so let's say that I have gone to the doctor, I got my prescription, I get to the pharmacy, I'm ready to pick it up, and it's not ready yet. Why does it take some time to fill my prescription? That's a great question, and it's a level of frustration for a lot of our patients, and especially in the advent of drive through pharmacy drop-offs and pickups. You know, we sometimes equate those drive throughs with a fast food establishment. Well, unfortunately, you're not there to pick up a sandwich, right? I mean, this is our health, these are our medicines, this is important. Behind the scenes, what your pharmacy team is doing to make sure, first of all, when it arrives, if it's even there and been faxed in when you get there, is that the drug is correct, the dose is correct for you, there's no drug interactions, that um, they may have to call for a prior authorization for your prescription, this happens quite often. In the situation where you have controlled substances involved, there are some specific legal requirements and bookkeeping requirements that have to be done behind the scenes to make sure that that's all taken care of appropriately. The phone may be ringing, there may, may be some more urgent situations happening in addition to just your prescription at that point in time. Really the bottom line take home message is that when you get ready to uh, visit with your pharmacist and get counseled from your pharmacist on all the questions we talked about. They want to make sure that is the correct prescription for you. Everything is right when you leave the pharmacy. So there's a lot of things that end up going on behind the scenes to make that happen. Okay, Lisa, thank you so much. You're welcome. We're going to be back after this with more answers to your questions about your medications. Don't go away. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. We're continuing our conversation with Lisa Sather about how you can be an engaged and empowered patient when it comes to your health and your medications. 
Lisa, let's talk about some scenarios that we might run into when we go to our pharmacy. Let's say I get a prescription filled and I go into the pharmacy and find out it costs hundreds of dollars. Do I have any options there? That's a great question, Beth, and I think this is a great subject to discuss for our viewers. So I think firstly, it's really important to note that if you have any reservations about the cost of your prescription as you arrive at the pharmacy to pick it up, you immediately ask to speak with your pharmacist because if you choose to pay for that prescription and it leaves the pharmacy by law, it cannot be returned. You're not gonna be refunded the money. Oh, okay. So very important to know. Um, so it's really, I think it's interesting to point out that most providers are not going to be aware of all the different types of prescription plan formularies that are out there. What might be less expensive for one plan might not be less expensive for another plan, even between Medicare Part D plans and those kinds of things, all kinds of different commercial insurance plans. So having said that, your pharmacist may be able to then say to you, look, there may be another alternative available. Um, I can even write down some options for you that you could discuss with your physician that may cost less than the prescription that has been prescribed. Sometimes that may not be the case. Sometimes there may not be an alternative. However, more times than not, there potentially may be something else you could start out with that would be lesser expensive and still work the same. Your pharmacist may even be able to call up your physician and discuss those alternatives on the phone and help you out that way. So that's just a great conversation to have with them and it's another reason why they're such an important part of your healthcare team. Absolutely. Okay, I have another one for you. Sure. Let's say my doctor gives me a coupon for a prescription. I get a three-month trial, and at the end of that three months, I find out that now my prescription costs $450. What do I do? Heard of this happening quite often, and we've had this happen quite often, in fact. So free trial coupons or you know, free trial offers are um, coupons that drug manufacturers provide to physicians' offices in order to help offset the cost of prescription drugs. Now, that can be a good thing in the, in the uh, situation where you, there is not another alternative for you, and they may help offset the cost for a period of time, say three months, you may have a $0 copay, or even for three months, you may have a $20 copay per month. Um, the, the unfortunate situation is oftentimes these prescription coupons are always for brand name drugs, so um, once they run out, out, you go to fill your prescription and the prescription is going to be full price because your prescription plan doesn't recognize you know that you haven't tried something different so uh, it's it's just really important at that point in time to talk to your pharmacist and they can maybe counsel you again on what maybe some other lesser expensive alternatives you can talk to your doctor and say look you know great thanks for the coupon but now I'm having to pay four hundred and fifty dollars what is something else that might work best for me I can tell you in most cases there is going to be a generic alternative may not be the same generic drug, but it may be a generic drug within the same therapeutic class of drugs that is going to work as well for you as something else that was a brand name drug given a coupon to get you out the door and get you going. Okay, great. And we have heard a lot, especially recently, about prescription drugs or the drugs you have in your medicine cabinet falling into the hands of your loved ones. What should I do to properly dispose of my medications? That is a great question. So first of all, it is. I want to talk first about the fact that anytime you have a prescription drug, it is important to keep it locked up and out of the reach of children. That is something that so many times we don't even think about. Uh, strangers maybe coming into the home to visit, things like that. Your prescription medication should be locked up at all times in a cool, dry place and out of the reach of children. So that's first and foremost. Um, and then after that, when medicines are no longer needed, it's really important to dispose of them properly. And we want to reduce harm from accidental exposure or them getting into the wrong hands. So there are several options and recommendations to consider with respect to doing that. Um, there are prescription drop-off locations. And you may have heard in the media around mm -hmm. the state of Montana over the last several years, in fact, since 2010, literally thousands of Montanans have brought back unused prescription medications tons of them to drug take back days that have been sponsored by the Department of Justice and by the DEA and those have happened all throughout the state you know uh, since 2010 um, and so that's been really important but in addition to that there are uh, the options to go to different drug drop-off locations throughout the state that information is available on the Department of Justice website I believe we'll have that superimposed on the screen for our, our viewers so they can check that out and literally there are drop-off locations throughout every major city in, in the state of Montana 
all of the time. And then all even some of the smaller towns throughout the state of Montana, for example, here in Helena, uh, the Helena Police Department on Breckenridge is a drop-off location. So folks can drop off their drugs at any given time to one of those locations um, as they see fit. Now, if you are in a situation where you don't want to take the time to do that, it is there's another mechanism to dispose of your medicines properly, and it's recommended by the CDC and the Office of uh, Drug Control Policy. It's very simple. You can do this at your own home. So you're just going to take your old uh, prescriptions that either you're done taking, they've been discontinued by your doctor, or that uh, you are no longer using, and you're going to empty those into a bag that has either used coffee grounds or uh, old kitty litter or just even new kitty litter, whichever you prefer, and you're going to seal the bag up and you're going to throw that in the trash. So that's just dumping the prescription pills actually into, the, into that um, undesirable substance, if you will. And then the second part of that is you want to take your prescription bottle and remove all of your personal information by scratching it off, peeling off the label, and you can throw that in the trash and get rid of it. Um, and that is recognized as the appropriate way to do that. And again, it's really super important. Just a quick story. I know we just have maybe a couple seconds left, but um, you know, you, I don't think you think about the fact that your things need to be locked up and put away. Uh, I myself was a victim of a stranger coming into the house and um, taking an old prescription that I had had left over from a surgery, had not thrown away, and it was uh, taken out of my home by somebody who'd come to visit for an open house. So oh I'm gosh. a pharmacist, should know better than that, but did not have my prescriptions either thrown away, disposed up, or, or locked up and put away. And so that just reiterates again, it can happen to anybody. It did in fact happen to me. So make sure you do that. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Lisa, for being here and all your great information. Absolutely. Appreciate it. And thank you so much for being here as well. I'd also like to thank Monique and her for her being here and sharing some tips with us. Um, we can all work with our pharmacists to be a more engaged and empowered patient. Make sure you make them a part of your healthcare team. Until next week, stay fit, stay well, and stay healthy for life with Healthy Living for Life. We'll see you next week. Healthy Living for Life is brought to you by Mountain Pacific Quality Health. We'd love to hear from you. If you have suggestions for future programs, visit our website at mpqhf.org or call us at 406-443-4020. You can also catch us on YouTube by visiting our website and clicking on the YouTube icon. Special thanks to Fire Tower Coffee House and Roasters. Production facilities provided by Video Express Productions.